Hello everyone, so today we're going to be discussing my 2022 luxury bag collecting habits resolutions. Interested to see how I change my shopping habits? Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome. Happy New Year. We made it to 2022 finally. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with who I am, my name is Caleb, and on here you're gonna find a lot of things like luxury shopping, reveals, reviews, hopefully not as many unboxings this year, which we'll get into here in a minute, and pretty much anything that has to do with life and style, you're gonna find on this channel. So before we go any further, hit the subscribe button down below, give this video a thumbs up, and say hi to me down in the comments. I love interacting with all of you. You know, it's just a fun and safe space. And I post every Wednesday and Sunday at 10 a.m. Central Time, if that's not enough for you, find me over on Instagram, caleb.snell.designer. Same name over on TikTok. If you can't tell behind me, we're actually getting about seven inches of snow here in Chicagoland. So I might film some TikToks today or tomorrow. We'll see. No promises. But speaking of promises, the reason why you're here. So 2022, it's a new year and with it brings new promise, new possibilities. And this year I've decided to reel in my luxury shopping habits a little bit. A little bit. I didn't say a whole lot, but a little bit. So last year, if you watched my designer bags I purchased in 2021 video, you'll know that I purchased, I think 32 was the round number that we came out to. That's not including the two I sent back to Fashion File. So technically 34, but we're only gonna go with 32. And I think that's only counting designer handbags and not like Coach and Longchamp. In that case, it might be a little bit more. Anyway, so moving forward this year, I've decided that I don't plan to buy as many bags. I'm going to try and stick to 10 or less. Now, going from 32 to 10, 10 still a lot of bags in one year, don't get me wrong, but it's going to take a lot more planning and a lot more mindfulness, which is just kind of going to be the theme, I think, of 2022. 2021, you know, it was a whirlwind of a year. Um, looking back, I don't know, you know, it's only been like 12 months, but it felt like three years crammed into one year. It, it, it was a long year. A lot happened for me in 2021. I started my YouTube channel. We, I got promoted at work. We moved to the Chicagoland area. Uh, 2021 was a big year, not only for me, but I'm sure for all of you as well. So hopefully 2022, we can slow down, kind of reflect a little bit more and circling back, be a little bit more mindful. So I've decided to only buy 10 bags this year. I'm going to buy five bags new from boutiques, which with that, you know, those typically come with a higher price tag, usually quadruple, what you can get on like fashion file or rebag. So Again, that's gonna help me kind of reel it in, plan more, save more, which you know I, I need to do more of this year as well. And then probably about five or so bags from the pre-owned market. So that's gonna be like probably mostly Balenciaga. Quite honestly, I wanna get a good example of a few more bags before the prices skyrocket. I've already noticed that in the um, pre-owned Balenciaga market, the price is already starting to go up. And I kind of wanna be ahead of that trend and get like three or four more. Anyway, so let's get into it. I'm going to break it down by house. We're gonna go alphabetically starting with my favorite, of course, Balenciaga. And we're gonna work our way through the alphabet all the way up to Saint Laurent. I'm hoping that this video is only 15 minutes, so keep your fingers crossed. I'm going to try and be fast. So up first, Balenciaga. All right, so B is for Balenciaga. And as you all know, Balenciaga is my absolute favorite house. I think I'm up to 13 or 14 bags and quite a few wallets and small other goods. But we're not here for that. If you need a refresher, I'm gonna have all the links below for all the bags that we're seeing up here on the table, previous unboxings and things, so you'll, you'll be able to catch up. Now, when it comes to Balenciaga, there are two bags that are currently out that I have my eye on. The first one is the small hourglass and the shiny box calf. I love the hourglass. I think it would be a great addition to my collection. Now, I'm sure by the time I'm ready to buy it that the colors that are out right now won't really be in stock anymore, but I do love the light green. It's got like a really neat, like kind of 90s beachy aesthetic to it, and I am here for it. That is my vibe 100%. Now, when it comes to Balenciaga, you have to have the Neo Classic. For those of us who love collecting the older motorcycle bags, this is the closest iteration they have, minus the La Cajole, which I also won, but Zane and I argue about the heart mirror. It's, it's a thing. Maybe I'll do a story time later. But I thought it'd be so much fun to not only have the old city, but the new Neo Classic. And right now I am living for the color beige. And that's another thing for next year. The goal for 2022, no more black bags. I literally have like probably 20. And a black bag does the same thing as the next black bag. I want to introduce more color into my collection, maybe more neutrals, more tans, browns, just no more black bags. I, I have tons. But that said, I am living for the beige with the silver hardware. It's a really good combo. And even the light pink is really cute too. But again, those colors are pro probably 
probably both gonna be gone by the time I'm ready to buy. Ooh, imagine on the shelf, the pink and the mint green sitting side by side. That would look really good. Now, Balenciaga, the last bag that I would want to buy new from the house would be, there's this bag, it came on, it's gonna come out in spring 2022. And Romina Rose May, when she was doing her recent, I think it was Harrods or Selfridges tour, I'm pretty sure it was Harrods. Um, they had like a Balenciaga pop-up there and they had the bag on full display right in the center. And it is stunning. So it's kind of like the hourglass slash downtown. Um, it's got one single handle at the top and like a like a doctor's bag kiss lock closure at the top, I think. I am in love with that bag. I would take it in the pink, the gray, the black. I know I said no black bags, but this bag's a vibe and I might have to get it in black. Anyway, that is high up on the wish list for Balenciaga. So next up, let's talk about a little coach. All right, so for those of you who have known me for a while, Coach was my first love. I, I love Coach. I, I've kind of shied away from it in recent years just based on like the design wasn't really my aesthetic anymore. Been there, done that. I worked for Coach for a while. Anyway, so now that they're kind of redesigning some of the new collections, I am absolutely loving it. Like this mini cash and tote is a total vibe. I want more colors to come out just so I can buy them. And of course, I've had fun collecting some of like the older vintage pieces from the early 2000s. To me, early 2000s coach is such a vibe that is like the perfect era for coach in my opinion. So I've actually carried this yesterday and it was a ton of fun. Anyway, so the only new bag from Coach right now, aside from this and more colors, would have to be the Rogue. You guys, I am loving the Rogue. You know, a lot of you have it. I think Agent Bag Reviews, she has a gorgeous one. Um, maybe two, I'm not sure, but I know she has a gorgeous one. I found online that they have this program called Design Your Own Rogue, where essentially you go to the New York City, I think it's the Madison Avenue boutique, and you can pick from like the leather types, the sizes, the color of the interior, all the things can be customized hardware. So I'm thinking of flying out to New York and I hope they let me film this in the boutique. If not, it's gonna be a complete waste of my time and money. But I would love to do like a come with me, design your own robe kind of episode. So if that's something you guys are into, let me know. Of course, we're gonna have to wait for COVID to kind of slow down. So I'm thinking maybe late spring, early summer, hopefully, fingers crossed. However, I can't decide if I want the Rogue 17 or the Rogue 25. I like how small and cute the 17 is. And once all the things that I wanna factor into it design-wise come out, it's about the right price for me. Um, however, I really like the idea of having something a little bit bigger that I could use every day. So anyway, so for those of you who own the Rogue 17 or 25, let me know down in the comments, which you prefer. Coach Rogue, who knew? So I lied. So there is another coach bag that I want and it was recently on the runway again for spring 2022 and it's part of their love letter to New York City collection or whatever they're doing. But I would love, 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 love to get my hands on the cash and tote with the Eagle NYC decal on the front. I just think that would be amazing to have in my collection. So if that does happen to drop, now I was reading Out Magazine, I think they interviewed Coach and, and the, bar, the owner of the Eagle NYC bar. And unfortunately, I don't think the bag is going to come into production, but if it does, the morning they release it in my cart overnight shipping I have to have that bag it is so cool so I don't have any bags to bring out so let's just dive into it but next up I would like to buy my first bag from Chanel all right, so when it comes to the house of Chanel, I obviously don't have one yet, keyword yet. However, we were at, I think we were at the Sears Tower, Willis Tower, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, we were sitting in the food court a few weeks ago when our friends came to visit. And across the way, I saw the most gorgeous Chanel cocoa handle. And that kind of, I don't know, piqued my interest. So I think I've narrowed it down to either the large cocoa handle, I wouldn't hate a Chanel 19, and I also wouldn't mind having the Chanel boy bag, any size in my collection. So I think 2020, 22, 2022, oh, that's a mouthful, is going to be the year of Chanel. I would like to add at least one, preferably vintage, just because I know from watching everyone else's videos, the vintage Chanel is much better than new Chanel and new Chanel prices are completely unwarranted. We're definitely going to go pre-owned. So 2022 is going to be the year of Chanel. Now let's talk about some Fendi. All right, so next up, we're going to discuss Fendi. Now, for those of you who've been around with the channel for a minute, I think it was in October or maybe September. No, it was October. I went a little peekaboo crazy and I bought two. So I started out with my saddle one and then I bought my much nicer black peekaboo. They're both a size large. So I think this year I want to try maybe a medium peekaboo. Now, I can't decide if I want to go full price with this one or go pre-owned. I know that the peekaboo in general doesn't really carry its value very well. So I know that I can get a very nice medium on fashion file for about half the price of what a new peekaboo would be. But having that brand new peekaboo experience with like the box, the rain bag, which these rarely ever come with pre-owned, just the experience I think would be a lot of fun. Now, if I did do the medium peekaboo from Fendi New, I would probably go for the white that they have in right now. The medium peekaboo I see you in white, and I think it has like a really nice kind of a blushy pink interior. And I love that you can snap out the pockets in the newer ones and like buy different pockets to 
to snap back in. And then you have the added fun with the defenders. I just think that, you know, a medium peekaboo would be perfect in my collection. So that's happening this year, most likely. And then I'm also in love with the Fendi First Clutch. I'm seeing it on everyone on Instagram and on, on YouTube, and I think it's an amazing bag. This is probably one that I would get for, go for in like a lighter tan or like one of the more, you know, the beige or the brown color, the light brown. I just think it's a beautiful bag and it would be right at home in my collection. The leather looks amazing. And I love that unique hardware at the top with the F in it. I just think that's super cool. So I think 2022, we're gonna see a Fendi or two. Next up, let's discuss Gucci. All right, so in 2022, there's only one Gucci that I really have my eye on. And if you can guess, knowing my style, it would definitely have to be the Gucci Diana tote, and I would want the size small. I think that the nano size or the, the extra small is a little bit too small for me. And I like the vibe that the small tote gives, plus it's just a little bit more in price, so might as well get more bag, I guess, for your money, if you will. As of right now, I'm really leaning towards the white leather. Uh, Palayo Diaz on Instagram carried his white one all over Venice when he was there over the summer and it was absolutely gorgeous. I loved all the outfits he paired with it and I think he even carried it to the premiere of the House of Gucci film and it, it just looks amazing and I think you know it's structured it's I mean obviously Princess Diana vibes it's the perfect bag and I think it'd be right at home in my collection. So that's really all that I'm eyeing right now from Gucci. I, I love what they're doing with the ready to wear. In fact, I dusted off some Gucci for you guys today. I just, their bags aren't very exciting right now. So I'm waiting for them to kind of amp it up a little bit in the bag department. Plus I got my dream Marmont. So I'm pretty much good in the Marmont area, which would look kind of cool with this jacket anyway. Very Gucci-esque. Anyway, so next up we have Louis Vuitton. So next up, we're going to discuss Louis Vuitton. Now, this was the house that kind of started my designer bag obsession back in 2006, 2007. I've owned quite a few throughout the years. Uh, right now, it's not a house that's really high up on my radar anymore. I think that the designs, although I can appreciate them, aren't really necessarily my vibe anymore. So I'm kind of, you know, cooling back with, with Louis Vuitton as far as the new designs go. Now, pre-owned, I would love to add some more to my multicolor collection. The Courtney Clutch is amazing, especially in black with all those studs. The Beverly MM is definitely going to come in my collection, probably in white. And I'm thinking I need I probably won't be able to carry it off very well and only carry it occasionally. But I mean, I obviously need the Alma GM and the Speedy 30 in multicolor, right? So 2022 is going to be the year of multicolor. However, new from the house, there's only one bag that I'm eyeing and it's the Speedy 40. Not the bandolier, just the typical straight up handheld Speedy 40. Um, that was the very first brand new bag in my collection way back in January of 2008. And uh, I lost it in a fire, rebought it, sold it again and bought a convertible and I, I don't know why I sold it the second time. I was stupid. Now, keep in mind in January of 2008, I only paid 650 before tax for that bag and it's now nearly 1500. It would be well over 1500 after tax. So I don't know if I, if I wanna pay for it to be brand new again or if I just wanna find one from 08 pre-owned. I don't know. So stay tuned and, and find out with me. However, that would probably be the only bag that I bought brand new from the house. Now, aside from the Speedy 40 new in-house, I would probably want to do maybe the Zippy Coin Purse again. That was my first brand new high dollar back then for me, SLG. And I wouldn't mind like a clay and then a four key holder and a posh, set, a posh toilet 15 if they would, you know, sell me one and not pretend like they don't have it. I'm sure I'd run into that issue like everyone else. Maybe there are a few things from Louis Vuitton that I want, mostly small items. So next up, we're going to talk about one of my favorite houses and the last one in our house alphabetical list, the house of Saint Laurent. All right, so for the final house of Saint Laurent, this house probably sparked my interest back in 08 when they added the Muse 2 bag. Now, I, I love this bag. It's one of the easiest bags in my collection to carry. It's light. It's honestly the perfect bag and it does not receive nearly any amount of love that it should for you know such a gorgeous bag from only 15 years ago. So with that in mind, I will be adding a few more of these to my collection, both large and medium. They're at such a price point that I mean, might as well snap them up before you know the late 2000s come back into style. I know right now now we're all into like the Y2K trends. So I mean, eventually the 2010s will have to come back, right? So I'm gonna snap these up before everyone else starts to in probably about five, 10 years and while they're still in good shape. And then the Sade clutch. So I bought this new from the Chicago boutique over the summer. I think I revealed this to you guys in like June or July. So I've had it for a minute and I've carried it a few times and I, I do like it. However, of course, after I bought it, they introduced all these fun colors. There's that really bright yellow that they have in the collection, which I really couldn't pull off. I don't really wear a lot of yellow. Plus I have the bright yellow Balenciaga clutch and two yellow clutches in one collection just doesn't add up. 
to me, but they have it in a gorgeous metallic pink. It's almost like a champagne-y pink, and it is so gorgeous. I think I first noticed it when we were in Barcelona back in November. And then again, of course, when we were at Saks Fifth Avenue downtown, they of course had a few on display. They are gorgeous, you guys, in the metallic pink. So I love pink. It's one of my favorite colors. I mean, I've painted my apartment pink. We had pink dinnerware. I, I love the color. So I might add that to my collection. And I would also like to add the Sac du Jour. Well, do I? Because it's very structured, so it's basically a Diana tote with gussets, which is basically kind of in the realm of the Birkin. I don't know, maybe I want a sac du jour. If one comes up at Outlet in like the all black, well, I, even though I said I wouldn't buy any more black bags, maybe in gray or in like a navy blue, then I might snag one, but I really do like the sac du jour, so that might be coming into my collection too next year. We'll have to wait and see. All right, everyone, well, thank you for joining me on this 2022 resolution odyssey, I guess is what we could call it. I think that, you know, plans and resolutions, they're great. Rate. They kind of help you build a framework for the year ahead. Do you necessarily have to stick to them 100%? No. I think that it's important to allow yourself to grow and explore and try new things. And maybe resolutions help us get to that end point. So anyway, I would like to take a moment and wish you all a very happy, very healthy, and very prosperous 2022. We made it. So let's um, conquer this year. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Have a great week, you guys. Bye-bye.